Hi, in this video I want to talk about property investing and how I think many people do far too much of it. My name is Lars Croyer and I'm a former hedge fund manager who's written a couple of books about finance and now I'm doing these videos slightly as a hobby. Um, the two main reasons that I think many people do too much property investing, particularly locally, is one, um, many people fail to appreciate the huge gearing that a mortgage on your property gives to your overall economy. And two, implicit in, in property investing is often a huge exposure to your local economy. And I want to talk a little bit about the, what you call the correlation risk or the risks that come with essentially putting all your eggs in one basket and allowing the possibility or the risk that everything can go terribly wrong for you all at the same time. I want to walk you through an example of Bill from Baltimore who's trying to buy a house for himself and his family. Um, let's say Bill has savings of $100,000 and that he's trying to buy a house with a value of $500,000. So with this $100,000 savings, Bill might decide to put $75,000 of that into the house. He'd then go to the bank and get a uh, loan-to-value mortgage of 85%, which would be the $425,000. And adding the two together, he would get to the $500,000 house that he's dreaming of buying. You could play around with the percentages and have a lower or higher loan-to-value mortgage, but, but this would be fairly standard. So after buying the house, Bill now has total assets of $525,000, which is the house, obviously, and the cash he didn't put into the house. He's got... Uh, the mortgage of $425,000, so his net savings are now $100,000 like it was before. But unlike before, majority of Bill's savings are now tied up in the house and not in ready cash or wherever he was leaving the savings before he bought the house. So now uh, Bill's got his house and he's obviously hoping that the value goes up like most people do after making what will be the biggest purchase of their life. But I want to walk you through a couple of examples of what might happen to Bill's economy if the house prices go down instead of up, as he's hoping. The second scenario where the house price goes down in value by 10%. You know, the $500,000 house has now lost $50,000 in value. As you remember, Bill's savings were $100,000. So losing $50,000 is a loss to Bill's savings of 50%, which essentially means that you know your house price went down by 10%, which in the grand scheme of things is not that much. But Bill's net savings went down by 50% in value. So that's really bad news for Bill, obviously. So let's instead take the case where the house price didn't go down by 10%, but instead went down by 30%. So now Bill's $500,000 house has declined in value by $150,000. And Bill's savings have gone from positive $100,000 to negative $50,000. And Bill is effectively bankrupt. Now, you think 30% house price decline is a, a very rare occurrence, but it happens with some frequency in various geographic places around the world, and you should be ready for the consequences if that happens to you. So continuing with that down 30% scenario, Bill is now obviously in massive trouble. And there are a couple of lessons I think we should try to take away from that. One is... It's easy to forget the huge gearing that the mortgage gives to your net savings and the downside that can come with that. We obviously all hope when we buy a house that the value of the house goes up in value and we get rich from that. But we have to be ready for the potential downside if the housing market goes against them. The second lesson is that we should be very careful about over-investing in property. You already have huge local exposure, and there are many risks that can go wrong at the same time with the local economy. So we need to try to minimize the local exposure. Just to give you an idea of some of the other kind of assets that are also tied to the local economy, a lot of people would have other locally-based investments. They might have company shares, they might have even hard assets like a car or other possessions, then they will also often have an less tangible assets like their job or their job prospects. They will maybe have a partner with job and job prospects. They could even slightly more, but perhaps just have a future inheritance that are that is based uh, in large part on the local economy. And what we tend to forget is that all of these things 
can go against us at the same time and for the same reason, namely a decline in the local economy, which leads to a decline in the local housing market, but also a decline in all these other things. It can even be the government, the local government safety net and things like that. So think broadly, not just tangible things, but also intangible things like your ability to learn new skills, the value of your local-based education. Don't allow everything to go wrong at the same time and for the same reason. And adding to that by over-investing in property or even over-investing locally. So diversify your risk and minimize the risk that you have a terrible um, sequence of events as a result of the local economy. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that uh, useful and interesting. I'll try to send videos like this out with some regularity. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. Um, but in any case, I hope to see you in the next video.